Hello, world. This is Freda Reba Darcy and Patricia O'Connor here. I'm about to step out on the balcony, and folks, it's going to be a little loud. We have some maintenance guys going on, doing some um, doing some uh, pressure washing, and they are going to make things a little loud. So I'm just going to have to talk over over their loud machinery. Uh, today on the bonsai balcony is Patricia O'Connor and uh, we are going to discuss uh, bonsai. Wow, what a shocker. Yeah, uh, what is bonsai? What is not bonsai? And who gets to call that? Who gets to decide? What? Who are, the, who are these bonsai police that are pointing to things and saying, this good, this bad, this bonsai, this not so much. Um, first of all, uh, as stated, Patricia O'Connor Bonsai Balcony, we're here on a winter day in Alameda, and you can hear that loud machine. Um, as uncomfortable as it is for me, the person doing the work is actually standing in a little creek with a pressure washer. How unfortunate is that for them I mean, to be standing in a creek with a pressure washer anyway uh, that explains our surroundings otherwise we are on the bonsai balcony and I am surrounded by more or less a uh, hundred little trees some of them are maple some of them are pine trees a lot of them are pine trees some of them are Don redwood some of them are cypress some of them are oaks some of them are wisterias um, trident maple cork bark oak we have a few species here and um when people talk about bonsai i've taken a few i've made art a study in my life not that i, I don't have a degree in it although i've probably accumulated I've, I've probably accumulated the hours and um and a lot of and some of the and actual the actual class time i've actually dabbled in uh, art academia, both its history and uh, just other facets of art. Um, it kind of came with my love of photography and painting, uh, which I'm not a painter. I am, I am a, uh, a um, film noir, uh, black and white photographer. So uh, you might not would have suspected that by the sloppy video work I do. Um, yeah, but anyway. Uh, when it comes to art, if you go to an art show and you might be surrounded by other people who have all made a point to put on something and to uh, make themselves uh, presentable and go to an art function. And the person who looks at something and says, well, that's not art, is usually the date of an artist because typically people who are trained realize that they don't get to say what is or what isn't art and to that end people have pushed those boundaries that's why several years ago a uh, porcelain journal made its way to the display uh, at some famous art dating some famous art museum somewhere had this thing and um, you know and that created quite a stir Somebody also took, I believe it was a black line down the middle of a white of a white page. And that was at, uh, at hanging out a famous gallery. And that just enraged people. And the more it enraged people, the more it proved itself to be art. Because that's really all it has to do. If people would have uh, thought that uh, it was a line pointing to a fire extinguisher done by the builder so that we would know where to find the fire extinguisher, then no, that wouldn't have been art. But it actually invoked a feeling. It pissed people off. And that kind of checks the minimum box of what gets to be art. And as such, I don't get to say what's art. Um, we all, with equal stance, get to not say what is art and those of us who say devoutly that something is not art are typically showing themselves not to be aligned with the traditional view of what 
you know, the code of ethics that you kind of accept in artistdom. Now, also, this is not written like in academia. This is my opinion, having been there, and I think a lot of other people feel that way, and that was my opinion based on the, you know, um, uh, the feel of the room, basically, when you're among other artists and when you are uh, an art student and all that. You know that uh, everybody gets to be a critic, nobody gets to be the um, art police. In the same way, nobody, everybody gets to be a critic, nobody gets to be the bonsai police. So if I say this is, this is, this isn't, this is my opinion and nothing more. And whoever you are, wherever you are, you get an opinion also, and your opinion is just as valid as mine. So that's the little bit of groundwork, and, and uh, I've already laid into my opinion on that. So when it comes to bonsai, I'm also going to give up the opinion that once something has crossed the line into bonsai, that it is then, yes, bonsai forevermore, uh, and then if it dies, it's dead bonsai, right? But um, if something ticks the box of uh, a finished, uh, showable bonsai tree, and then has some sort of catastrophe or undergoes a restyle that's going to take a couple of years. It's a bonsai tree and re-refinement or whatever, but it's, to my way of thinking, it's no less than bonsai tree. It's already crossed that. It's already crossed that line. If it's in repair or if it's in a restyle or uh, or if it died, it was still uh, a bonsai tree. So to that end, this guy is. Uh, is a bonsai tree. And by a bonsai tree, I mean it has been cultivated in such a way it has been placed in a bonsai pot. When it was placed in a bonsai pot, that did something to the roots. It, ref it uh, confined them to this space. Those roots then expanded to that container and are not allowed to go anymore. When it gets unplanted, the roots will be cut back, put back in that container. And so it is in what I call the bonsai vortex which is a spiral. And every time your tree comes around the spiral, and this is a calendar in a spiral, and every time it comes around, certain parts of this vortex are gonna be repeated. Candle cutting, needle thinning, feeding, stop feeding. You know, those are all going to be like set spots in your vortex. And then there are things that you move out of as you move into other things. Refinement, uh, taper, uh, whether or not we're looking at foundation branches or secondary branches or tertiary branches. We move from one to the other and then the next year we're not going to come around and do that again as we've moved from them. But all the while there are things in our bonsai vortex that um, that are a matter of are a matter of clockwork. We come around to this part where we were last year and we do this again. Now, so this tree, uh, is a bonsai tree. It's, it ticks all of those boxes, as does the little Japanese pine next to it. Um, this cork bark oak. This cork bark oak is in a bonsai pot, which is to me, that's it's in, a, it's in the bonsai vortex when it enters a bonsai pot. From that moment on, it's feeding, it's watering, it's uh, pruning, and everything else will be as per the root development going on in this restrained environment. So once a, uh, a tree goes into a bonsai pot, it is now in the bonsai vortex and is a bonsai tree. A bonsai tree in some state of development. Is there a line on that? Yeah, uh, this trident maple. I got this trident maple in a, uh, not in show shape. It was in show shape. It had a huge green canopy and I could show this tree in spring or in summer or something like that. And it would have been, it would have been in a, you know, in a, in a lower league uh, bonsai show. It would have, it would have been impressive. It would not have been impressive in a fall or winter show after it's dropped its leaves. It didn't have the uh, ramification um, and the branch structure that, that one really wants to see when they're looking at the maples and stuff. But yeah, it's a finished tree. How about that little wisteria right there next to it? Is that a bonsai tree? To my way of thinking, it is not a bonsai tree. It has holy grail status in that when I started bonsai this time around, 
I was literally holding this four-year-old clone. It was a stick, right? Um, I pruned off things a couple of weeks ago off of this cypress tree that were bigger than that as a stick when I potted it. And I overpotted it. Uh, I overpotted it in a pot bigger than that, which got broken. So um, is this a bonsai tree? No, it's a pre-bonsai because one, it's overpotted. Two, I haven't started training the roots in such a way that I would normally um, train the roots if it were in the bonsai vortex. Um, it's in a bonsai pot, but it's still overpotted for the size of the tree that it's in. I made a decision going in, and this was a rookie decision, that this was my first bonsai tree, and the pot that I selected to put it in was even bigger than this, and I went, I think the videos that I've already seen tell me that this is overpotted, but this is my first bonsai tree, and this is my first bonsai pot, and by the time they're done, they will go together just nice. If it takes a little longer for this tree to grow because I've overpotted it, then so be it. Also, I don't have a yard to stick this in to let it fatten up for a couple of years. So the next best thing to my way of thinking would be to overpot it. That's not necessarily so. Some trees, some root masses like a little bit of squeeze. And if you go from a small pot and then it uh, squeezes itself into that and then you go from that to a slightly larger pot until it starts to squeeze out of that and then you go to a slightly larger pot, you might can do that way faster than if you stick a small tree in a bigger pot and hope for it to just expand and catch up. Sometimes they sit there and just not ever do anything. Um, and that's the gives and takes in that. Is that a bonsai tree? No. It's a pre-bonsai tree because it hasn't entered the bonsai vortex. I'm not clipping its, uh, I'm not clipping its roots back and doing all that other stuff. It is in a bonsai pot, but in this case, the bonsai pot is over potted. So that would be that. I would say the um, California oak right there is a bonsai tree, although it is not uh, a top notch specimen. It was a top-notch specimen in show shape, one acquired. We had some uh, dieback a couple of years ago that was some sort of black death that caused me to do uh, go through there and just hack and chop a whole lot of it. So we're in a rebuilding process, but that is a uh, bonsai tree and a bonsai pot. Its roots get treated the way they're supposed to. Its foliage gets treated the way it is supposed to to maintain a bonsai tree. And so, yes, it is. But now, that's 40 years old, that oak. This is about a year old. Is this a bonsai tree? I mean, It has one limb. It's been wired. It's also in a bonsai pot. I wouldn't say it's over potted. It's a little, it's a little mame. This is a bonsai tree. It's not a bonsai tree because the years say it is, but because it gets its needlework, it gets its candles cut, and it will get its root work done as per this small, shallow container. Bonsai pot means a uh, tree in a tray. In other words, which, which uh, denotes a shallow container. And what is the big deal about bonsai anyway? And who gets to decide? In case you haven't, in case I haven't made myself clear on that, and to my way of thinking, there isn't an academy anywhere that says this is a bonsai this isn't a bonsai in my opinion a tree is a bonsai when it's in a bonsai pot in a suitable bonsai pot for its root mass and begins to start going through the training that uh the root training that would come with a pot in that size to me then you're in the bonsai vortex and you are to one degree or another a bonsai tree having said that do they have to be a bonsai tree to uh, really get your attention or really get your respect? No, they do not. What I have framed up here 
is one of my favorite it's one of my favorite projects and this is my little bald cypress trio my grouping and it is in an oversized uh, pre bonsai pot the idea here there is to let it already have the root masses when these things were acquired down small enough to plant them in bonsai pots the problem with that was is we had so much uh, trunk uh, to develop and so much limb to develop and so much taper to develop that if we tried to do all of that with with fine bonsai roots it would have been it would have been a very 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 long process so what I did was what I attempted to do was what I did right was is I planted in a large mica pre bonsai container if those were bonsai trees that were finished they would probably be in something that's about four inches deep and to my taste maybe a rectangle shallow uh, bonsai container that because they go uh, looser foliage it could be um, it could be a glazed pot with some color to it I would think like some kind of swamp gra uh, grass green like the color of a little alligator, alligator grass or something to mimic the uh, top of the water would have been just off the top of my head. But these are free bonsai. I am just as proud of them. And when it comes to my little bonsai show, these guys are probably, you know, if I say so myself, some of our viewers are um, bald cypress enthusiasts and um, care nothing about the black pines or the ponderosas that I seem to go on and on about a lot. Um, and I get that. These are beautiful trees and worthy of their own respect. And the time that I get, and they're easy. They're not extremely hard to grow. Uh, but I also like that as pre bonsai, to me, they're impressive. To me, they're beautiful. Right now, the least so because there's no foliage on them. But in the summer and in the spring, their foliage almost glows. It's almost a day glow color with um, with this green that's just that's just absolutely beautiful. And it's like I have done a video where I said, "Come sit with me under the shade of my cypress trees," and you do that on this balcony. If you go and you occupy that space right there, those little trees are like a shady rest. It's cooler there. It's nicer there than anywhere else in the apartment because I actually have uh, trees that are big enough to sit under. So this pre-bonsai, like my wisteria behind it is the pre-bonsai. Um, but to me, they're no less impressive. They're no less fun. No, I couldn't take these guys and go to a bonsai show with them. But some of my stuff that is, uh, that is definitely bonsai, to my way of thinking isn't necessarily in show shape right now we're looking to get back there here really quick i think probably the closest thing i have to a show shape show uh show shape tree would be my literati japanese black pine uh that's framed up now that guy is the looker that it was when i got it a year and a half ago and um uh this guy we're on our way back with it. I'd like to see a little bit more needle density. I also like to see a little bit more, a little bit more tight uh, up here in its top. Uh, right now, I haven't done a, uh, I haven't done a candle cutting on this tree in the past year. So we've let the needles get really, really long and try to, um, a, a, as a matter of allowing the tree to regain its energy. Now, I live in an apartment. If I didn't live in an apartment, if I had uh, if I uh, had a big space or I had some space in my backyard to let that tree recover, the best way to do it would probably to, uh, make another wooden box for it, fill that full of some nice moss that the roots can go nuts in, and then give the tree about two or three years of rehab. Uh, I don't have the space for that. I have the space for the pot that it's in now. So what we do is we lay off the candle cutting, we lay off the needle thinning, except just a tiny little bit, I am doing a little bit of, I am in the middle of a wiring project with this tree. We'll pick back up on it really soon. Um, but other other than that, I'm probably a couple of years away from having that back into show shape. 
are rebuilding on our cork bark, maybe two or three years. The same with our other coastal oak. Um, and meanwhile, these guys are just coming along. I'm just several years away when um, when this becomes becomes that when this becomes that and when this encompasses the rest of that and these whole areas here begin to take the round appearance that we see there that'll be the point that these guys are pulling up are pulling up into the final stages of pre bonsai at that point they'll go on my cart and we'll take them down the hall down the elevator down the stairs i'll turn this guy on its side go underneath there cut all the trees loose start raking out our substrate <clears throat> at some point i will probably cut those root balls apart because they are planted at different heights um, and each one of them, the outside trees, for instance, can come up a little. And when it does, whenever I get ready to do this repot, it will be after we have accumulated enough mass in those leaders to give us taper in these trees. And we pulled up to some kind of tertiary, at least, on all of our foliage. And they've taken, they've taken our little bonsai formal. These are going to be a formal, three formal uprights. And, uh, when we've achieved that with these guys, that's whenever we'll go into a, a bonsai pod. And from that point on, we will have entered the uh, pre-bonsai to bonsai stage. And that is a quick explanation of bonsai and what is and what isn't bonsai. Now, if I were a, okay, let's just paint a scenario. I'm a college student. I don't have a lot of time. I don't have a lot of uh, money left over aside from pizza money. I can't worry about expensive trees or something. So I would like, but I would like bonsai. Wisteria might be my way to go. If I have to disappear and go to, uh, go vacation at the end of spring break, I can flip that, I can flip that little tub it's sitting on over put water in it up the hill and take off for spring break for a week and still have my wisteria it's a tree that uh, that I could have and call my bonsai tree now did I just say that in my mind this is not a bonsai tree yet yeah no in my mind this is not a bonsai tree yet it's a pre bonsai but I also said that it's not up to me to make that call. If I were if I were a, a person who wanted to enjoy bonsai and it mattered to me, and this was the only bonsai uh, experience I had, if people asked me if I had a bonsai tree, I would tell them, yes, I do. I have a little wisteria, it's three years old, and it's slightly overpotted in a round, cheap Japanese pot. And I would say that as if I was just as proud of it as I could possibly be. So that kind of comes full circle. And that's kind of what I would say is my opinion regarding what is and what isn't bonsai. Uh, I've enjoyed this little chat. I haven't done one about this lately. These trees that are in this uh, pre bonsai container that are over potted, if I had a yard, that would have the faster way to have done this rather than overpot them would be to uh, plant them in the yard whenever you take one of your trees and you plant it in the yard you can expect it to just the, the uh, speed at which you can accumulate mass doubles quite often if not more than that uh, that wisteria right now if it had been in a yard for these three years would be at least as big around as a golf ball and not slightly larger than a Sharpie, um, a small pin or a writing.